he says, um, he gets her out in the floor to dance, and he says, you know, you can follow me. And he says, okay, trust not in my ability, but in his inspires my submission. Mm-hmm. And I was like, it's not submission that she's afraid of. It's submission on a plane where it's not what she wants. And I'm curious about what, what you thought was the driving force behind her not finding the right Nigerian guy? Was it the submission or was it simply that this was a woman that had that wanted to grow outside? What were your thoughts? Okay. On that with submission, um, that's a, a hot topic in the black community as well for a black American where uh, men want yeah. submission. But my mm-hmm. my whole point with submission, you have to be able to trust the man in order to submit to him. And if you don't trust him to to take care of you and to look out for your best interests, there is no submission there. And I think that is what happened in that instance. She trusted Raphael. She knew that he would take care of anything that she needed. Mm-hmm. He, he he chewing his mouth open and he, he has no food. <laughs> All he cared about was uh, can you cook? <laughs> <laughs> right. To put her in the kitchen. Right. So, and so she, was inter- she was being interviewed and he wasn't even auditioning. Oh, right. She, exactly. She didn't exactly. even apply for the job. <laughs> and the interesting thing is with Aziri's character, um, since you bring up trust, Lisa, how can you trust another person when in reality, Aziri hasn't even been raised to trust her own judgment? She's been tr- mm. raised to trust her mother's judgment. Everything goes back to what mother said, what mother wants. And in that, you know, if you don't raise a child to trust their own judgment, they are going to stumble and bumble through life. Um, And you see that a lot with Azari. She's a very wishy-washy character when she meets a man who she's obviously attracted to, um, but she hears a voice she trusts in her head over and over. And guess what? It's not her own voice. And um, and I think that speaks to a significant theme in this story, because uh, Raphael, our hero, also hears a voice in his head as well, and it's an echo of of a traumatic past that he hears in in his head. And and I hope we'll get to that soon. Like, what do you think of Raphael has a secret? Um, and uh, you know, I hope we'll get to that soon too. But, yeah, I don't think Azari really knows how to trust because she doesn't trust her own judgment. And we see how that plays out in the story and the damage, you know, that it does to her, um, her relationship with her sister, you know, her sister's questioning her, and her relationship um, with Raphael. And it makes you see, you know, the real fault lines in this family unit uh, between Azare her sister and the mom, and then the uncle and his son, and how that plays out in this family unit. At least that's my point of view. I don't know. At least I see you like, um, you know, uh, I don't know, but that's how I see it. So I remember a long time ago when I was taking one of my first writing courses, and the person said, um, the, the, the teacher of the class made the comment that when writing modern-day romance, it was more, almost more difficult because unlike the Victorian era where there was like this class system and all of these other different things, there are very few reasons why a modern-day couple can't simply just decide we want to be together. So one of the major roadblocks in this relationship is culture. So Raphael is not just Canadian. He is Spanish Canadian, like deep roots in Spain, as deep as her family's roots in Nigeria. We have, um, I don't even know if we fully express just I'm how gonna brutal argue that point. Azaria's mother I'm going to argue that point. Is. Okay, what? Because you said his, her, almost as deep as her roots in Nigeria. So I'm going to say, I don't remember this family saying they went back to Nigeria as much as Raphael's family talked about Spain and visiting there and going back there and who's there. 
Like I, and that's another thing where I really don't see as much of this cultural connection outside of this family unit. Um, I mean, did the mom mention how often they went back to Nigeria after they left when she was 12? I didn't see that on the page. Um, I don't think we hear it from the mother, no. And I don't hear it from the character either. Like, she was like, well, will my kids, like, she's pregnant, and she's questioning, you know, will her kids go back to Nigeria? I'm like, did you go back? Because I didn't see it in the book where you and your sister were going back, you know, that y'all kept in contact with uh, with the village uh, that you live within. Like, I didn't see that. And that's another kind of sticking point for me when you talk about cultural roots and you're, you know, kind of hammering home culture, culture, culture. But what does that look like when you don't live in that culture every day? And I'm not so, sure if you, we see that play out in the book you know, where you see this extreme difference between I don't know if that. you necessarily have to go back to Nigeria because it lives within her. Her parents, that's who they were, and they raised her with that within that culture. So I don't know that, you know, you have to actually go to Nigeria and visit in order to keep it alive. It's who she was right. in, in general. I agree with you. I agree with you. But Michelle was saying, you know, her his roots as deep in um, in Spain as her roots are in, in Nigeria. But my point is, like, Raphael, like, his family, there's a part of his family that I think were actually in Spain during this book. And the mm-hmm. mother, who would be Azari's babe's grandmother, actually talks about spending summers in Spain. And my point is, since the Nigerian family keeps talking about culture, I don't see where they're physically, like, making that effort to go back home to keep her girls, like, rooted in that culture outside of, the, you know, their family unit. But she's not, like, going home to find an adult boy. She's in Canada trying to find an adult, an adult boy. But and you know that's what, what I, I mean. I don't think that that speaks. Just, I, I almost want to say that that speaks larger than we're even giving it the preference for, because mm-hmm. the fact that her mother can actually find that many Edo boys for her to date says that her mother is injected into that community. Trust mm-hmm. me when I say that there is a, her mother is injected into the Edo mm-hmm. community in order for her to even be able to find that many young men for her daughter to date. I mean, mm-hmm. that that may not be, I guess, outwardly dialed in, but I, I, that's a definite proof of something because that would not, that's not normal in the sense of like, oh, you're just going to run into somebody on the street and be like, oh, yeah, he's a, a good Edo Nigerian, but no, you're not. That's, I feel like we're getting the sense that her mother is very dialed into the community, and so therefore she, her daughters know how to make this thing, know how to cook. They dress a certain way for family functions. So we're seeing their culture play out in those ways. Now, what I found interesting, and um, I'll move forward because we're, it's amazing we're running out of time already, but um, Azere's mother, in essence, disowned her for the majority of her pregnancy. Her mother just, she says at one point, she's like, you're dead to me. And Azere is dealing in, in a situation where she is with Raphael. She says, she told him at the beginning, I've chosen you over my family. So she's with <laughs> Raphael. She's almost trying to ignore anything that has to do with family. She doesn't want a baby shower, you know. She doesn't want, like, all of those close-knit situations. He asks her to move in with him, and she kind of, like, you know, it, it frightens her, and she's, like, still questioning whether or not she's giving up too much of herself to be in this relationship. She has, you know, she's lost, and we, we finally see it play out when her friend surprises her with a baby shower, and Raphael's mother and sister are there, and they're happy to see her, and the mother is excited about being there, and she, we see the first fault line. Azere is worried because, there, there's strange things happening with Raphael. He invites her to go to New York, then he resends the invitation. He comes back different. She knows there's something he's not telling her. She tries to get it out of him. He won't say what this thing is. And I still won't say what it is for the show because there are certain surprises in the book. But she's got, like, um, these doubts that are being 
they're almost like the fault line that's being feathered by all of these little things. We've got mom isn't speaking to her. She's missing her mother. She's got this promise to her father that's weighing heavy on her. Raphael's family is wonderful. They're fully involved. Raphael is wonderful, but there's something he's not telling her. They have this strange encounter with this couple who's happy and tearful upon seeing him, but he doesn't fully explain who they are. They're, they're family friends, but you're like, well, family friends, you know, get teary-eyed when you meet them in the street. I mean, and it's, there's, it's, they're obviously ties to another life. But we love Raphael. He's a good guy. We, I mean, this is a man that showed up at her mama house to mow the lawn because she was too sick to do it. And at what that's the, we see this huge breaking point where the sister says, you never speak up for yourself, to the point where she says, do you remember when Auntie said if you accidentally swallowed poison, you wouldn't even open your mouth to ask for the cure because you wouldn't want to bother anyone. Like, she's just kind of like not fault line. So, of course, our black moment comes when our girl breaks up with Raphael. What did you think of the lead up to the breakup and then the breakup? Um, um, this was a hard couple for me. I, I will say that I enjoyed the storytelling and reading this book. I think um, the author did a great job of crafting this story. I hated most of the people in it, um, but uh, but she did a get great job crafting it. And what I mean by that is the story did what it was supposed to do. It invoked a lot of emotion. That's what story's supposed to do, right? So she did a great job mm-hmm. with that. Um, but what I what I will say is the breakup between Raphael and Azure. Um, yes, Raphael did not share everything he should have, but he's also with a woman who doesn't fully trust him. He asked her to move in. She really don't want to move in. Um, you know, she's dealing with stuff from her mother. Everybody knows she's dealing with it. She lies about it and pretends that it's not really happening. And she'll do stuff like say, I don't want a baby shower. Well, of course, if you're having a baby, people who care about you want to celebrate with you. And she's not honest about what she's feeling. So I struggled with that um, some. I wasn't surprised when the breakup happened. I was surprised that they made it as far as they did because he has a secret and and um, our heroine will, at any cost, she'll either lie or, or cover things up. So that part was hard for me. It was challenging. Um, I, yeah, I felt like she was, he was far more all in from the beginning. Like there's mm. that scene um, before he finds out when she said she's pregnant, and there's the scene where after they've gone out, and they're at home, and they have this night of love making. And he says, and it's um, Azera, he says, stroking my braids, look at me. I can't find the strength to do that. So he lifts my chin gently up until our, eye lock, our eyes lock. I need you to understand something. Mm-hmm. This is not another one-night stand. Okay, then what is it? I watch his lips for an answer. More, he says, this, you and me. It's more. More, he nods, and I smile. Okay, Raphael. Like, he is yeah. all in. This is a guy that has no com- He has no qualms. He is not questioning anything. He's not worrying about a loss of any culture. He is just all in. And I wonder, how much do you think plays into this 12-year-old girl and this past? Did you see it coming because of the fact that this promise was made at 12? Or did you, like, where did you put the weight of the, the pains on the decision? Would you put the, the weight of it on Azere? Does her past play a role in this? Or is this simply a matter of a woman who just can't make a decision? Like, where, where, what do you think? Okay, Lisa, you want to answer it or you want me to? Go ahead, because Azere got some wonder with that. <laughs> Okay, so I will say this. Azire, um, you could you could see that this relationship was going to fall apart only because 
you could there is a lot of her internal thought process on the page which I appreciated in one instance and in the other one if she was a friend I probably would have punched her in the eye 